One Republican congressman sparking outrage overnight for his statement that Afghan refugees should not be brought to the United States. Montana Congressman Matt Rosendell tweeting this, quote, I have advocated that we should try and settle these individuals in other countries around Afghanistan that share their values and culture, especially if we cannot ensure proper vetting. To be clear, this tweet is over 75 total Afghan refugees that his state is receiving. Sadly, but these xenophobic sentiments are not exclusive to Mr. Rosendale. The AP is reporting that despite overwhelming bipartisan support in this country for bringing Afghan refugees to the United States, there is an organized, cynical effort by former Trump officials, of course, to use the plight of the Afghan refugees to open a new front in the culture war. From that Associated Press reporting, quote, the former Trump officials are writing position papers, appearing on conservative television outlets and meeting privately with GOP lawmakers, all in an effort to turn the collapse of Afghanistan into another opportunity to push a hardline immigration agenda. Joining our coverage, Congressman Ruben Gallego of Arizona, an Iraq war veteran and member of the House Armed Services Committee. Thank you so much for joining us today, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. First, in your view, what is owed to the Afghan refugees who, through um, extraordinarily difficult circumstances, make their way to our country? Well, what's owed to them is what we promised them. And we promised that if you help the United States, the United States will protect you. Now, what we're doing and what, oh, actually what, you know, Congressman Matt Rosendale and other congressmen are doing is we're basically going back on our words and actually endangering our national security. Because if other people, you know, other countries that we should ever get involved with in a war don't believe that we're going to follow by our word, then they're not going to help us. They're not going to have the on the ground intelligence that we need. And at the same time, this is just a very cynical and bigoted move by uh, the representative. He knows that many of these, uh, most of them have gone through extensive vetting. Uh, and in a state like Montana, as big as they are, they can certainly take 75 refugees that have been helpful to the United States and its work. And the, the public is, is where you are. Uh, 68% of all Americans, as you know, 68% of all Americans don't agree on very much. I don't get to read that number very often. 68% um, of all Americans support the United States taking in uh, refugees fleeing Afghanistan after security screening. It includes 56% of Republicans. Um, how do you keep that support there to make sure that the resettlement is successful? Well, the, re the way we keep the support is that we show the human nature of this. And we also have all the, you know, you know refugees aligned with and talk to the, the people that they helped. You know, I know many uh, Afghan refugees that have come here that were friends and, and allies and were interpreters. Some of them actually have met up and have moved here specifically to live closer to the men and women that they serve with. So we really need to humanize and, and, and teach, you know, people that this is a, a strong relationship and also that refugees do make this country Great. We have a strong history, bipartisan history, whether it's the Cuban refugees, whether it's the Vietnamese refugees that have really created great businesses, have created great families, have really have become part of the fabric of the United States. Uh, this is an addition, not a subtraction. And it's a shame that the you know Republicans are, are losing their way because they used to have such a rich history and support of refugees and refugee resettlement in this country. Um, a high level Republican resignation because of the toxic stew, I, I believe um, he called it a cancer that Trump has on the party. Is it your view that Trump's grip on the Republican Party is getting stronger, weaker or about the same? Stronger. And, you know, I have a lot of Republican friends here in Arizona and, you know, they're, you know, fiscal conservatives that have been strong, uh, you, know, you know, advocates for constitutional protections, everything else. And they feel that this party has really left them. Uh, and at this point, it's, you know, the, the, the Trump Republican Party is becoming smaller and smaller, but more virulent. And that becomes very dangerous because instead of having two parties that can work together, you only have one party uh, that is, you know, I would say the party of sanity, us Democrats. And then what's left of the Trump Republican Party, which, you know, believes in conspiracies, QAnon, uh, and, you know, is supportive of things such as the January 6th insurrections, something that, you yeah. know, I think in the end we should all be afraid of. Uh, and it's a really sad, sad day that we're going from the Reagan Bush uh, party to what what is I, I think is a Trump party. And, you know, it extends obviously to, to COVID um, and to the effort to continue the fruitless search that Bill Barr and Chris Krebs and other Republicans failed at. And that's the hunt for voter fraud. 
your state hosted um, the Maricopa County um, fraud it, as it was uh, coined yeah. by some of my guests. Um, efforts to scrutinize uh, the, the, the voters and the vote in Pennsylvania are ongoing and, and, and commencing. What do you have to say after watching or, or having some, um, some well, inside knowledge about what happened in Arizona? Well, number one, we had one of the cleanest, safest uh, elections that the state of Arizona's ever had with the most participation that was certified by Republicans. Governor Ducey, the Attorney General Mark Brnovich, and the County Super Board of Supervisors in Maricopa County, which is uh, four one Republican, right? So, number one, number two, this is a scam. Uh, Donald Trump's been raising money off this, has not sent any money to the audit. The GOP here in Arizona has been raising money, has not done anything on the audit. Individual politicians, public politicians have been using it to raise money, have done nothing to actually help this fake audit. And at the end of the day, you know, they keep on saying that they need to put the report out, they're going to put the report out, and they just keep on extending it, much like Colts will extend, you know, the, the end days or whatever their Colts uh, prediction is. <laughs> and um, it's just going to continue. What's going to happen in Pennsylvania, you'll see it again. They'll come up with, you know, uh, you know, miscellaneous reasons why something was off. They'll announce it and then they'll retract it a couple of days ago, raise some money uh, and continue doing that. This is a, a, a sham, but it also it destroys the integrity of, of politics at people voting mm -hmm. and people wanting to vote. And I think it's actually to come back and hurt Republicans at the end because there's going to be Republicans that are not going to vote in some of these very close elections because their leaders told them that you shouldn't even count the vote. Uh, and as much as I think I would benefit from that, I think that's good to the overall system. And I hope the Republicans would understand that. 